And welcome to another Forza 4 video today, uh, appropriately it's Suzuka, we had the F1 race there yesterday, let's check it out on Forza 4, away then in the panels, R1 class, uh, and you can see me just getting knocked there from uh, the Toyota GT1, we'll be looking at that again, an inspection from the stewards shortly, so around the first couple of corners, wow, the grip is really low on this circuit, uh, compared to say the Maple Valley that I was running the other day, this is a lot more tricky to drive, you can see second gear around here, almost down to first gear in some of these sections and these are normally like third gear uh, the car has so much power when you turn off traction control that you never near full power and you'll see on the telemetry uh, in a moment that i'm you know, gently on the throttle all the time really really progressive trying to control the power control the wheel spin i'm a lot faster than the cars in front at this stage but they are a bit bunched up when they stretch out it does become a little bit more challenging to overtake them See the replay cameras there in the bottom corner, looking fab. Some nice cameras. It is a shame sometimes they don't use all of the TV cameras. Uh, but I've been saying that for years and years and years and years. But we are getting there. We're getting better all the time. So, uh, coming up now to the spoon curve, I'm having massive difficulty with this curve in this car, or in any of these R1 class actually, when you turn off traction. You turn in, there's a lot of understeer, as you might have seen on the hairpin earlier. And the second part of the curve here, second gear and I still just can't get the front where I want it. it took me an age to get on the power so coming up to 130R uh, again if you if you stay on full power the car's just going to go wide basically there is a little bit of a lift here gives it nice and controlled get through there sweet sometimes even when I'm from a long way back I could consider a lunge but the AI is quite aggressive in this game so uh, you'll notice I'm avoiding the curbs trying not to touch them, couldn't get on the power, hit the kerb, couldn't get on the power. As soon as you touch the kerb to track the control off, they will spin you out in a second. So you've got to be, you know, really, if you're on the kerb, don't accelerate. Just keep a, a balanced throttle there until you're off the kerb again. Breaking down again. I would expect that to be third, but second in this car. Yeah, and I don't want to run, use all the road. Braking earlier than I expect to get the car in, because the understeer is dreadful. Just trying to keep a nice smooth line with the car, keep it as smooth as possible, constant understeering there. But I'm trying to keep some throttle balance in the car through the corner so that I can open it out quicker on the exit. And you can see I can't keep up the AI at this point, They're pulling away from me. I'm quicker on some parts of the course, such as this section. Uh, in fact, the first couple of sectors I'm actually quicker than the AI, but the final sector, you know, they're, they're a lot quicker than me around the spoon curve. They're coming up to the hairpin again. You can see turning, car just, it's just not having it. It's so slow, and yet I just can't get the car into the corner. It could, you know, I mean, I'm in second gear, but that's simply for a traction issue. I can't, can't get the car in, so need a tuning setup. These, uh, these cars, I have to admit, are all decent setup. I haven't tuned any of them. Haven't had the time, really. Just, uh, there is so much in Forza Motorsport to, for to see and do. Uh, it's a fantastic game, a huge amount of fun so far. Um, and certainly uh, so much to discover and unlock as well. So, again, I'm pretty quick around 130R compared to the AI. They tend to be a little bit slower, so I tend to always make a little gain on them. But not enough on this uh, particular race. So certainly for sixth place, and that's traction control off. We come across the line, and then we'll take a quick look at the telemetry as well in more detail. So here's the telemetry then, uh, away from the line, and uh, on the power nice, and suddenly I take a whack, bang, there we go, managed to keep it on the racetrack. So, like I say, you're really tentative around here, you can see I'm on the power, but then I'm braking quite early, I can't even get on any power, just a small amount there, a really small amount of power, the car had, it carries, the, the issue with this car is it does carry a lot of speed into the corner. So essentially I'm, I'm trying to coast the car as quickly as possible, uh, gliding the car into the corner rather than actually driving it. It's a different type of style trying to maximise your, your, uh, your grip as it were when you're trying to get into these corners and maximise your grip for the traction when you get out. So over the kerb, 
tricky over those curves as ever. Here, for example, if I was being super aggressive and I absolutely wanted to win, I could always dive up the inside there. You can always bash an AI out the way. But what I'm trying to show from these videos is clean racing uh, and optimizing lap time and just getting an idea for the course so that when you're racing with assists off, that's what you're going to be doing. So spoon then, where are we? Sixth gear, something like that, down to fourth and then down to third. But we're actually going to gear lower, I find. So rather than third, we're doing this next gear in second. And we're going up through the gears once to straighten the car up. Lovely engine sound for these cars in the game. A really, really nice sound, I have to say. In every car you drive, it has that individual sound to it. Absolutely fantastic. 130R, what a corner. I can't imagine doing that corner in real life, the G-Force going through your body. It really is something. You know, it's funny when people try to explain G-Forces uh, as to what they feel like, but the one example I could give you is if, if you're strapped into a race car and a race car accelerated and stepped on it, the best example I can give you is it feels like turbulence in a plane and you drop a few thousand feet and have that whole rush, a uh, shocking rush go through your body when you're not used to it. And it is something which uh, is an amazing feeling. You know, if you're ever doing a drag strip or something like that, you'll feel that rush of acceleration go through your body. It's quite a shocking feeling. So think of the worst turbulence you've ever felt on a plane, that moment going through your body. And that's what the, the kind of the sensation that the, the G-force almost gives to you when you, uh, when you uh, accelerate like that, with that kind of power. It really is an amazing feeling. And you almost need to detach yourself from where you are in the environment to become part of that car. And that, Obviously, it's practice, um, you know, practice of all the elements uh, within the environment, really. The, you know, the noise, the smell, everything. It's a whole concoction uh, when you visit a racetrack, and, you know, experience is everything. But the best racing drivers are always pretty sensible as well. It's not about being reckless, and we saw that in some of the races in the brands at the touring car day, you know, the genetic sports set, a couple of mistakes by guys, you know, unnecessary. Sometimes it's better just to stay in the race because it is always a long race and there is a lot of room for error. So, coming around, <coughs> and uh, I've been struggling for grip. You can see on, on the power, you know, it's limited. As you see that bar going up there, really progressive. So, I'm always trying to maintain some bottle through the corner because that's where you're, I'm losing time essentially. So I'm not able to get the power down, so I'm losing, able to carry speed through the corner as I would like. 130 are a little bit wide trying to carry a bit more speed but uh, this is the the end of the race now and what we'll do is we'll look at the traction control on and a comparison between the two in the next video as well so more on this to come as well as lots more Forza coverage it, it's not going to end this week I mean Formula One Forza Motorsport we're going to be running with this for some time lots of videos lots of analysis and stuff like that so this is on board now from uh, one of the AI cars, look at the GT1 just to the left there and you'll see it just drive into me, boom. That was a bit of a Vettel moment there, wasn't it? I have to say, uh, guess he didn't see me in his mirrors. Um, but round turn one then, so it didn't, look, didn't take me out luckily. These cars can get taken out really easy. Uh, you can see me narrowly avoiding someone there, but what's, what's key about this is uh, just how much contact there is with the AI. You'll see the AI bumping into each other all the time. This is a good look at the AI here. You'll see them bashing each other out of the way and are very aggressive for these type of cars. I mean, touring cars is one thing, they can take it. But these cars, they can't. They're not, they're not as good at taking good bashing as, uh, as the big heavy touring cars. So it is interesting to see just how much the AI is smacking into each other here. This guy getting smacked about there again. If that had been a player, that would have been off the racetrack, basically, and it has been a couple of times in the new videos, so I thought, well, you guys can see this. Uh, AI come in several categories. You can see here, they're really challenging in this race. Uh, some races, they're uh, very aggressive, very blind, very easy. There's, there's, there's no real in-between, you know, so that's something which I, I'd like to see improved in future versions, but on the whole, it's still a lot of fun. And that's why I'm looking forward to testing the online races as well. But uh, certainly interesting to see how the different cars behave and perform. You know, what they're thinking about. You see here going to 130R, that just looks messy, doesn't it? On the brakes in 130R, that would have caused a pile up if it was anyone else. How they all avoided each other, I don't know. 
but that was a quick lap then with the AI as well. So traction control off, we've seen the AI and the next video is going to be traction control on, a bit of a comparison and then loads more other stuff as well. Options, menus, painting, more cars and stuff. But that's it for now viewers, more soon.